Well, hello. Today's notes are on solving trigonometric equations. This is section 5-3 in your textbook. And as you can see, you will want to have your unit circle handy for doing these kind of problems. So if you don't have it handy, pause the video, get it out, have it right by your side. In fact, having that note sheet handy would be good as well. But having the unit circle especially useful for this next unit. Okay, but before we even get into that, let's jump right into our first kind of problem. So first example, we want to verify that this answer given here, or it's right here, is a solution of this equation. So basically all this means is let's take that answer, let's plug it back here in place of x, make sure it works. Now to do this, if you want to plug that in your calculator, that's fine, but your calculator doesn't have a secant key, so you might want to write this as 1 over the cosine of x, minus 2, does that equal 0? Well, if you do 1 over the cosine of, of pi over 3, make sure your calculator is in radian mode, you'll get 2 minus 2, that does equal 0. So when you see it just says verify, that means plug the answer in place of x, or theta, or whatever your variable is. Okay, so that's the first kind of problem we're going to see, but it gets much tougher then when we have a problem like this. Now we're not verifying an answer, we're looking for an answer. So thinking back to Algebra 1, verify meant plug your answer in place of the equation. Solve means find the answer to that equation. So we want to solve for x. Now what this means is we're looking for answers just from 0 to 360 degrees. So you won't get any answers like 390 degrees or 450 degrees and 0 to 2 pi. Now when you see a closed bracket on the left, that means 0 could be a solution. We see an open parentheses on the right. That means that 360 degrees could not be a solution. Okay, so this is saying find all angles x so that the sine of x equals square root of 3 over 2. Again, here's where your unit circle is handy. So I'm going to go back to that unit circle I had. I'm looking for places where the sine, which is the y coordinate, equals square root of 3 over 2. Here's one right here. And here's one right here. So thinking about those two answers in degrees, that is that means x could be 60 degrees or 120 degrees. And in thinking in terms of radians, x could be pi over 3 radians or 2 pi over 3 radians. So you can see right away where having a unit circle is handy. Now I just want to warn you about something. Let's just say the directions to this problem said solve. Let's say it didn't say solve in this interval. It just said solve. Solve means find every possible solution. So let me tell you what that means. It means, see this 60 degrees where that's a solution? Going all the way around the circle to 420 degrees would also be a solution. Going all the way around another 360 degrees would be a solution. So would this, so would this, so would this. There's an infinite number of solutions here. So if the directions just say solve, here's how we show that. We say... The answer is 60 degrees plus n times 360 degrees. So n stands for any integer. So it could be 1 times 360, 2 times 360, or 0 times 360. So that other solution would say 120 degrees plus n times 360 degrees. And in radians, we could say, hey, the answer is pi over 3 radians plus n times 2 pi radians. Likewise, 2 pi over 3 plus n times 2 pi radians. Now, just so you know, you will see some of these solve problems come up. On your next test, I'm going to put this in your directions. I'm going to put the intervals in there so we don't have to worry about doing this on the test. But just be aware that's what this means. So these directions look more complex, but they actually make your answer much simpler. Okay, let's continue. So same kind of problem, solve for x in this interval. Notice we're not looking at degrees, we're just looking at radians now. And here's your equation. Now, a little bit more complex equation. Notice on the previous one, sine of x was by itself. So in this case, we need to get sine of x by itself, which means we first need to add 1 to both sides, and then we need to divide both sides of the equation by 2. Now, at this point, we can look on our unit circle and say, okay, where on the unit circle do we have a y-coordinate which is what sine is equal to, of 1 half. And it happens in two places. It happens when x equals pi over 6, and it happens where x equals 
5 pi over 6. So there's your two solutions. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more like this. Same direction, solve for x in this interval, same kind of problem, so we know we want to get this trigonometric expression by itself. So I'm going to add 1, then divide by 3, which gives us tangent squared of x equals 1 third. Now we still don't have tangent by itself, so we want to take the square root of both sides of this equation, which gives me the tangent of x equals. Now we have to be careful here. Anytime we take the square root of both sides of an equation, we should have a plus or minus as part of our answer. And it's plus or minus square root of 1 third, which we can write as plus or minus square root of 1 over square root of 3, which we can also write as plus or minus square root of 3 over 3. Now all of these are really the same number, but we want a number that's going to appear on our unit circle somewhere. So we're looking for an angle that has a tangent of 1 over square root of 3, or square root of 3 over 3. Let's look back on our unit circle, so I'm going to go back to that. So tangent means y over x. So take a look at this right here. Let me get rid of what was, what was on here before. Take a look at this angle right here. Here your y over x would be 1 half over square root of 3 over 2. And if you simplify that, you'd get 1 over square root of 3. That's what we're looking for here. Here it would be negative 1 over square root of 3. Down here it would be negative over negative 1 over square root of 3. Over here it would be negative 1 over square root of 3. Those are the angles we're looking for. We've got four different solutions. So let's take those angles and write them as part of our solution here. So that means our angle, x, could be equal to any of those angles on our unit circle, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. Now the most common mistake people make is they forget this plus or minus right here. And if you forget that plus or minus, you'll get two of these solutions. You'll get this one and this one, I believe. And including that plus or minus gives you four solutions. So on your next test, you'll see some problems like this. And I'll know exactly who forgot the plus or minus based on the number of answers you have. If you have four solutions, I'll know you probably did things all right. If you just have two, it means you probably forgot that plus or minus sign. So one more like that, same kind of directions, and I'm going to get sine squared by itself. So add 3 divided by 4 gives us the sine squared of x equals 3 fourths. And we know we need to take the square root sine of both sides. We know that'll give us a plus or minus. So the sine of x equals plus or minus square root of 3 fourths, which is the same as plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. Now, I know those values from our unit circle. So I'm going to look on the unit circle for where sine or the y coordinate equals plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. And it happens in four places. So x, our angle could be pi over 3. It could be 2 pi over 3, it could be 4 pi over 3, and it could be 5 pi over 3. Any of those angles would work. Okay, let's keep her going. Now we're going to shift gear a little bit here, but next example here actually is, uh, is relatively simple. The only thing more difficult about this is we have to be careful. If we ever see this word just in our, for a solution, we have to do something else. So I threw this here in the middle of our notes here to make sure we're aware of that. Don't forget about that idea. So look on your unit circle for angles that have a sine or y coordinate of negative 1 half. And one of those angles is 7 pi over 6. Another one of those angles is 11 pi over 6. But we have to be careful because since it just says solve, it could be any of these other solutions. So I'm going to say plus... 2 pi times n to say that, hey, we could go completely around the unit circle, we'd have another solution as well. And we actually have an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so now that we saw that idea again, let's go back to solving in the interval. And this next problem looks completely different from anything we saw before, because we now have a couple different trig expressions. We have tangent of x times cosine squared of x equals 2 times the tangent of x. So we need to somehow simplify this. Now, let me start with what not to do. 
a lot of times people say, let's divide both sides by the tangent of x. Which seems good. We can then simplify some of this stuff. It would be much, much simpler now. However, if tangent of x equals 0, we can't divide by it. And we don't know what tangent of x is equal to. So we cannot just divide by one of these expressions. Instead, what we should do is we should move everything to one side of the equal sign. So I can say tangent of x times the cosine squared of x minus, excuse me, minus 2 tangent of x equals 0. And then factor out that tangent of x. Even if it's equal to 0, you can factor. That's perfectly OK. Oh, whoops, that's not tangent of x. I factored out the tangent of x. So that's equal to 2 equals 0. So now that gives us either the first part equals 0, tangent of x equals 0, or the second part, cosine squared of x minus 2 equals 0. Well, the first part's all set to go, but I'm going to solve this second part. Cosine squared of x equals 2. Taking the square root of both sides gives me the cosine of x equals plus or minus square root of 2. Now, kind of strange here. If you look on the unit circle, there is nowhere on the unit circle where cosine equals square root of 2, positive or negative. In fact, all the values on the unit circle for sine or cosine are between 0 and 1. So this is impossible. But what's on the left here is possible. So look on your unit circle for where tangent could be equal to 0. So y over x could be equal to 0. So basically, that means your y coordinate could be equal to 0. So that could be where your angle is equal to 0. Or it could be where your angle is equal to pi. Don't say 2 pi because it's not included in our solution set. So we have two possible solutions. Now, we're going to see a few more like this where we have to factor something. Sometimes you'll get factors where you don't get solutions. Sometimes you'll get solutions in both places. So let's look at another example. And since I already told you we need to factor, that's probably what you're going to have to do here. But looking at this, you might say, I have no idea how to factor that. But let me give you an equivalent expression. Let's say we had 2y squared minus y minus 1, and I'll just set it equal to 0. This I like to call an algebra 2 problem because you did a lot of these last year. We could factor this as, I believe it's going to be 2y plus 1 times y minus 1 which means you set the first part equal to 0 and solve for y. Set the second part equal to 0 and solve for y. If you do that, you get y equals negative 1 half and y equals 1. OK. Now, you've done those hundreds of times in your Algebra 2 days. Now, let's do something very similar with this expression. So we can factor it the same exact way. We'll set it equal to 0. We'll say 2 sine of x plus 1 times sine of x minus 1 equals 0. And then we'll set the first part equal to 0. 2 sine of x plus 1 equals 0. And the second part, sine of x minus 1 equals 0. If we subtract 1, divide by 2, we get the sine of x equals negative 1 half. If we add 1 over here, we get the sine of x equals 1. So there's our simplified equations. Now we look on our unit circle. Where is the sine of x equal to negative 1 half? Oh, that occurs in two places. It occurs at 7 pi over 6 and at 11 pi over 6. Where is the sine of x equal to 1? Oh, that occurs just in one place. That's at pi over 2. So our angle could be any of these three values. Now when you factor, expect each part to give you a certain number of answers. Okay, You could have one answer, two answers, three in this case, four. You could actually have a, a lot more than that. You could have no solutions. So just about any number of solutions. You, you could have, let's just say, up to eight solutions here. So look for any possibilities. OK, talk about a couple different examples, then we'll wrap it up. Same kind of problem here. But if you look at this immediately, you might say, wait, there's no way that we could possibly factor this. In fact, it's not even set equal to 0. So first of all, let's get things set equal to 0. So I'm just going to move that 2 over. And then let's try to rewrite things in terms of sine and cosine. OK, kind of like we did uh, about a week ago. So we can say the cosine of x plus the sine of x times tangent is the same as sine of x over cosine of x minus 2 equals 0. 
which we could write as the cosine of x plus sine squared of x over the cosine of x minus 2 equals 0. Now, let's try to get a common denominator here. And if I write everything in terms of something over cosine, we get the cosine squared of x plus the sine squared of x over the cosine of x minus 2 equals 0. And we know what's on top here is equal to 1. So we can say 1 over the cosine of x. And I'm even going to move that 2 back over equals 2. Taking the reciprocal of both sides gives me the cosine of x equals 1 half. Whew, that's quite a mess to end up with such a simple looking equation in the end. Now we can look at our unit circle and say, hey, what angles have a cosine of 1 half? And those angles are pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So this is taking a lot of skills we've learned so far in this unit and putting them together in one problem. So if you can do something like this, you can do just about anything I throw at you. Okay, one final example to take a look at, and this is a pretty complex one, simply because we're not talking about just x now, we're talking about 3x. Okay, so that's going to change things a little bit. Now, the instinct a lot of people have is just to divide everything by 3. However, that's oversimplifying things. We can't quite do that. So what we should do is make a new variable. Let's make a new variable called theta. And let's set theta equal to 3x. So I can rewrite this 2 times the cosine of theta minus 1 equals 0. OK. Now let's solve that for cosine of theta. We can add 1, divide by 2, which gives us the cosine of theta equals 1 half. And if I do that, we can now look at our unit circle and say theta equals, well, theta is going to be two different values on there, pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. In fact, it's many more values as well because we could add 2 pi every time. So we could say, um, let's, let me just rewrite this a little differently. So we could say pi over 3 plus 2 pi times n and 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi times n. Now you might say, why on earth are we, are we doing all that work? Well, we don't care what theta is equal to. We want to know what x is equal to. So I'm going to now make a substitution and say, hey, 3x is equal to that, pi over 3, plus 2 pi times n. And if we divide both sides by 3, we get x equals pi over 9, plus 2 thirds pi times n. And it also equals 5 pi over 9 plus 2 thirds pi times n. So pi over 9 uh, is on the unit circle, but if you also add 2 thirds pi to that, which is the same as 6 ninths, that's still on the unit circle. So pi over 9 works, but then add 6 pi over 9, so 1 plus 6. So that gives us 7 pi over 9, which also works. Now in this case, adding this 6 ninths would give you something beyond, oh, wait a minute, so 5 pi over 9 plus 6 pi over 9 gives us 11 pi over 9, which is between 0 and 2 pi. Let's try adding another one of these. Adding 6 more gives us 13 pi over 9. Adding another 6 gives us, let's see here, 19 pi. Nope, that's more than 2 pi, but we could add another 6 here, which would give us 17 pi over 9. So really, there's six solutions between 0 and 2 pi. All of these solutions are solutions not for theta, but for x. So I'm going to say x equals any of these. Now, if you can get these first two, you're probably OK. So if you understood everything up until that last part, you're probably fine. But that last part gives us all of our possible solutions for this. Okay, let's try some of these out. On page 376 is an assignment, so try this out. Once you got this done, move on to your next video.